Your ex-girlfriend, you know her character, I'm assuming, and you know the person she is, but she was newly to Los Angeles. So if she was invited on like a private jet to like Super Bowl in Vegas, would you judge her for that? Getting a little too close to home here, <laughs> given real life situations. <laughs> Am I really? <laughs> the way you're looking at me. <laughs> right, well... <laughs> Let's move on from this topic of conversation here. <laughs> Getting a little a little uncomfortable. Though I went to a place in Hawaii, it's like a kava bar. Fucking rules, dude. I have like a whole serum. Oh, or, hold I don't on, know. Hold on. Yeah. Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Living Large. Today's guest. I know her because I met her in real life. Well, we have Iggy first and foremost. What's up? And then we have Christina Kane. Good job. Welcome. <laughs> All right, I'm hearing my echo in these things, so I'm taking them off. Um, so I met Christina about eight years ago, back when I lived at 1600 Vine. And she saw on the last episode with Juana that she posted because she follows Juana. Who knows why she doesn't, un doesn't follow me on Instagram? She saw that Juana was on. And then she asked to come on, and then she sends me a screenshot, bro. I DM'd her eight years ago. You know what my line was? My phone number. <laughs> Wait, it was just that bold? Yes. It was like just... Not a hi, not a how oh. are you, just straight up his phone, phone number. That is but pretty bold. I'm pretty sure because we met in real life, though, yeah, that we I definitely, just probably sent it to you after to like yeah, text me. And then we definitely know each other for like mutual friends. Eight years later, she finally responded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, did you, how, how did you feel about that dm honestly i like respect that and appreciate it i'm sure we met through like mutual friends or something but it was so long ago so i don't even remember but yeah. i definitely love when a guy comes in hot like i don't want to do small talk banter like hey what's up what are you doing like i just like let's get up let's get up <laughs> let's get okay. up let's get up and, let's get, get, up and get on it let's go brother let's go let's go let's meet up like get straight to the point so obviously i didn't see it i never responded to it um but i do think that is a bold move and i respect bold moves just out of curiosity because it obviously it'll go to your like unread or like I don't know you folder, right? How often are ladies checking that thing? I mean, I check it pretty often, not because I'm looking for a guy to like has sure. messaged me, but like I'm very OCD, so like I like to clear notifications, delete things. So I check it pretty often, but you know, the people that are sliding in your DMs, I think are not anyone you want to respond to anyways uh usually so i don't know other people like some people say that people slide in their dms and they're great people good for them that's not my case so like when i check it just to kind of delete it would you rather meet someone in real life or have them slide in your dms i definitely would rather meet someone in real life but if it's someone that i feel like I would be into I don't mind them sliding in my DMs and if they do mm. slide in like just like a hi hi brown hand my name's Iggy it's <laughs> not going to work for like I mean like it'll just be like oh okay like I, I like when someone comes in hot that's just me but question who do you want to slide into your DMs mm. who, what is this guy that you're looking for I don't know like maybe like Jason Momoa or someone so a celebrity no Jason Momoa is like my <laughs> Tarzan physically or like you want a celebrity like an oh actor. no it doesn't matter if they're a celebrity like I just mean like my type well I have a really weird I don't have a type mm. so I can't really say that is I want a celebrity to slide in I want you know Joe Schmo from Jersey Mike's to sl slide in I don't Good really have it's too. not it's just it's not even about who you are it's how you do it mm. I feel like that's fair with like most things. It's like it's how it's 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 how you present. I agree. Yeah. I don't have a so, type. I know you don't have a type. You I don't? my type yeah. is strictly personality. Yeah, that's like, what mine is too. Like I feel like a lot of females and men my age like definitely have a type and you can see like with the people they previously dated like they all look the same or they dress the same or they're in the yeah. same industry but me it's like i've never had a type if you look at all my exes sit them down at dinner table they all look completely different they're all in different industries um they all dress differently it's like a banter and a wit that you have and it's like a mm. chemistry like that's what turns me on like if i meet a guy like i'd rather date a guy who's a six and is really funny and can make me laugh and we can banter and fuck around than a guy who's like a 12 is just like so it's a 12 yeah a 12 like, um, scale. Dude, that has like no personality or charisma and doesn't banter because he takes himself too seriously what, what about like ethnic variants i don't care i mean i've like 
never dated, I, I've never dated or hooked up with really that diverse of an ethnicity, but I'm not opposed to it. I don't think you can knock anything until you try it. So yeah. that's, a, that's a fair point. Yeah. Have you ever been broken up with? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I saw a podcast the other day and, and a guy was like asking these girls like why they aren't in relationships. And he asked, he's and they're like, oh, men are so f- afraid of commitment. And then he asked all of them, he's like, have you, have you ever been broken up with? They're like, no, I always break up with them. So it's like, are men, I've never broken up with someone. I can't do it. Yeah. I'm like, I'm fighting through that shit. But have you been in situations where you've wanted to do it, but you just can't yeah. do it? hundred percent. Like you've won. Yeah. I just can't commit. Cause I'm like, I don't know. My parents have been married for like 40 something years. So like, I just have it ingrained in me that like you fight through yeah, hard times and you, and you make it work. You have yeah. this like I- idealistic view of relationships, which, which is great because like when you find that one, you can work through the bullshit, but like when what's, is enough enough? What's the view? Yeah. yeah. Like, like what's the cutoff? Like well, when I vent to my friends, they tell me enough's enough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that is when you vent to your friends and on the outside, they see so clearly like, bro, this is so bad for you. But when you're in it, you're like addicted to it. I mean, things are, it's easier to, to view someone else's relationship and make a comment. Like mm-hmm. looking inward, looking at your own shit is so much more difficult because like you can't be objective. Yeah. You're living in it all day, every day. Right. But you're giving me pieces of information that allow me to objectively discuss your relationship without emotion. Mm-hmm. Other than like, yeah. I want you to be happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I also think that you don't see like the good times, right? Like when you sure. vent to your friends, you're always venting about the bad. The bad. You're just sad. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, but we love each other. You you guys aren't, aren't like involved. I think it's also like the like how f- frequent the venting is happening. You yeah. know, if you're always hitting up your boys, your girls, and you're like, oh, he did this, she did this, and it happens very frequently, then obviously they have a bad perception of your partner because you're constantly fighting or, you know, some mayhem's going on. But I mean, yeah, like what you were saying it's if you see a couple out and they're always fighting or they're always happy like first of all i don't think anyone's bi- business is someone else's relationship mm-hmm. i agree but like obviously when you go to someone like i've had people in the past like girlfriends of mine come to me to vent about their relationships that were super toxic and super unhealthy for them and we you know it's it kind of got to the point that you're like beating a dead horse because you tell them to end the relationship and get out but at the end of the day like this person has to make that choice for themselves, and they have to go down that journey on their own and as many times you can be like you're being stupid why do you keep going back to this you get to the point that you don't even want to hear about it anymore Mm -hmm. because it's just redundant at this point i think like to each their own and everyone has to like figure that out for themselves do you think when the repetition of all those problems continues to happen that there's any way out of it like can you work through it out of the relationship or out of the toxic I don't know. I mean, I've never been in really a toxic situation just because I know it when I see it and I'm not going to be the one to fix you or save Mm -hmm. you. It's not my job. So like, I don't want to enter that type of situation, but I think it depends the magnitude of what the toxicity is. Is it cheating? Is it lying? Is it manipulation? Is it physical abuse? Like, I Mm -hmm. think it really depends what is at hand that are we too deep? Like, can we get out of this or can we go back to being how we were? Or is it just like too broken? I like, I think the question regular regularly is like, is love enough? Mm -hmm. Like if you guys love each other enough, you can work through anything. Right. I think that if you care about someone enough and they care about you enough that going through like the process of figuring out how to make the relationship better, going to the work, whether it's therapy, whether it's individual or together, like, I actually do think that most things, like, I, I, I just don't see things as insurmountable. I think you can figure them out if you want to. If you really love that person, you'll put the work in to figure out how to come up with a solution. I, I really mm-hmm. do feel that way. Like, it's, I don't know. I just, I don't have this view of, like, giving up. Like, if the other person wants to make it work, whether they fucked up or cheated or whatever, even if it is a massive, like, discrepancy in the relationship... I still think it's figure outable. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I disagree in a way. I do think it's figure outable, but sometimes like 
I say you grow together or you grow apart. Yeah. Like we're right. constantly encountering different experiences in our lives that are shaping us, making us, you know, be who we are. And like, let's say hypothetically, we start dating today. We are going to continue to experience life separately. So in three years, we're either going to be on the same page or we became different people. Mm-hmm. It's a different book. And yeah. And like we can fight for it as much as we want and be like, oh, well, it was so great then, but we're also not living in the past. And it's like, why are we looking at what we were in our relationship when we're now three years in? So I think it really depends. I, you grow together or you grow apart. And I don't necessarily think there's any fault at that. Yes. If something really wants to be worked on, it can, but is it to the point that you're becoming a different person to make the relationship work? Sure. You know, Sure. and therapy also, I think I tell people going into it, like you have to have a very, I think going into a relationship, you need to be on the same page with therapy, not like, cause you're going to it right away. But if you're in a relationship for four years and then you're like, let's go to therapy and the guy or the girl's like, no, I don't believe in therapy. Well then it's, it's a lost cause anyways. Cause you're going to go to therapy. You're going to continue to better yourself. Your partner's not going to therapy. You guys were like this and now you're like this. So I think being clear on like therapy and your viewpoints on it, it's important entering a relationship. I agree. Like if, if you can see your own trap, and start to work through that, then I think you can work through anything. Yeah. But if you don't, if you just don't, if you, if you don't acknowledge your own shortcomings and work through that, then you're ultimately screwed. Yeah. Whether you like, regardless of how much you love each other. Yeah. You've got to be able to work through your own shit. Yeah. I agree. But a lot, and a lot of people don't want to admit they have any faults or problems. Totally. I'm perfect. Exactly. I'm the they best. don't want to look at themselves and be like, okay, nah. like I do this, I do that. Right. I really need to work on, and I've noticed a pattern in, in the girls that I'm attracted to. I don't know why I'm attracted to people who have, are kind of broken and like have a lot of trauma. I think I like, I don't know why. Maybe it, we could talk about that. Maybe and, so. Yeah. Like, no, like, I mean, cause it doesn't make sense because my family, I have no complaints about the way I was raised, like Catholic family, parents married 40 years, grandparents married 60 years, like everyone very healthy, happy, loving healthy, household and, and every girl that I've been attracted to parents divorced, dad left them this trauma that trauma and i don't know what it is that i like want to fix people and like give them the life that i had yeah why do you think that is i mean i think obviously nurture and nature comes into play like obviously you didn't encounter any of that because you had a really healthy upbringing Mm -hmm. but maybe i mean there's so many different scenarios that it could be like obviously a lot of people who come from broken households sometimes they are attracted to people that come from trauma and broken households as well but i've met other people that are like you and sometimes because they had such a good upbringing and a healthy relationship they want to be it's almost like they want to bring chaos into their life like their life is so normal and stable they've seen love they've seen commitment and instead of attracting someone that also can give them what they've experienced in the nurture versus nature of their upbringing they they like the like stirring the pot it mm-hmm. add, it, it like it adds you know flavor where maybe it's kind of boring, but also, I mean, maybe it's just like the aspect, a lot of people want to fix people and they want to be the one to save them. But I mean, I sound like a bitch, but I think it's no one else's job, but their own to like fix and save their self. I I don't think that's bitchy at all. Okay. You can be there to support someone and love someone, but like this person's issues are not your issues. And like, whether they're an addict or whether, you know, they, are bad with commitment and cheat like many, many, many times. Like that's their own journey. And no matter how many times you try to show them, like things can be better. You can get through this, do this, do this. No one's going to change until they really want it for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They have to want to make Mark and I've talked about this all the time. Like you can love someone as much as you can possibly love someone, but you can't do the work for them. A thousand percent. And and in in doing that, you overextend yourself. You get miserable because you're putting in 110% and you're not seeing any any results or you're not seeing any improvements because they're not willing to take on that 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 responsibility of working on themselves. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's funny, I like what you said, the chaos. Yeah. I've I've met other guys like you. I've always been attracted to girls with like tattoos because no one in my family has tattoos and I'm like, I, yeah. I have one, but you're like, like, Oh damn, I would love to get <laughs> tattoos, a, yeah. Yeah. but I'm like afraid to rebel. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to date the girl that will rebel for me. Yeah. I, I, w- I wonder if it's like the girls who have issues or that may or may not be damaged are, 
I wonder if it's, it's a product of them being attracted to you. Cause they're Cause like I'm stability, somebody uh, who wants to work with me, somebody who wants to like dote on me or like spend time and energy on me. Like girls who are broke, people in general who are broken that way require their partner to be able to give them a little bit of security. Yeah. And maybe like, maybe you just, maybe there's an attraction the other way. So it's not just you. Mm -hmm. Damaged people are interested in you as well because you're stable. Do you feel like all of your relationships have been like toxic and you're putting in more than they're putting in? And not necessarily. I, no, I don't think putting in more. I think I'm very, I was raised very independent. I mean, I've lived out here for 10 years by myself and I don't need a partner. Uh -huh. And I like actually enjoy being alone. Like I like my free time. And I think I tend to both my relationships that I've been in, we moved in together like immediately. And just moved way too fast. Mm -hmm. And then when I lived alone and had all this independence, and then all of a sudden, like, now I'm spending every waking hour with this person, I need to, like, give myself some space. But I, I guess I'm bad at communicating that. Because mm -hmm. I think a girl, when they hear, I need space, it's like, oh, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, I just need, like, an hour or two hours alone, you know, from going from 24 hours a day by myself to zero yeah. is a big shift. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, there's definitely things that I need to work on in a relationship in terms of loving. I'm very good at the start, but I think that's the honeymoon stage. And then I tend to like come back to reality and I like remember like, oh fuck, like I had a life before we were dating. So I go hard in the paint for like the first three months. And then I'm like, wait, shit, like I forgot about my friends. I forgot about my job. I forgot that I like this activity. So then I pull back a little and start doing stuff for myself. And then they're like, I think that the significant other's like, what the hell? You don't love me anymore. Like you were so intense and now you're not like, mm -hmm. I don't think that's abnormal though. It's like, it's normal to get lost in this new relationship. Like that's yeah. what, that's what the honeymoon phase is. Like yeah. you're so excited to spend so much time with them, but eventually there was this like leveling, right? It's yeah. like, all right, I just want to play Call of Duty with the guys. <laughs> like that's an okay feeling to yeah. have. Yeah. I don't you know think it's mean? abnormal, but I will say it, it is important entering a relationship, no matter how much you love that person and get lost in the honeymoon phase to obviously like keep your boundaries and your identity. A lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, get excited because they meet somebody and it's hard to meet somebody these days. Yeah. So Fucking they hell. like get totally engulfed in just like spending time with this person, going on trips with this person, waking up and just having sleepovers with this person that they kind of lose. Like that's where like the codependency comes in. Cause like mm -hmm. this person, she's not hanging out with her girlfriends anymore or going to Pilates every Tuesday. Like she always does. He's not doing call of duty with the boy boys night every Saturday and hanging out with the guys so it's like so it's like you become very codependent and i saw it on one of your videos and it really resonated with me i don't know who said it but you can't be a half and a half coming together to make a whole you mm -hmm. said that you have to be wow like we're so alike <laughs> you have to be two individual circles coming together to kind of make it like infinity like you have to keep your hobbies keep your passions keep your friends like do all those things just because someone's new is entering your life doesn't mean that that now becomes your life yeah I, it's funny because yeah, will smith told me that oh had, really like, yeah because when i went through my first breakup i went and did this like brand deal with will smith and i talked to him for like 45 minutes about like breakups and stuff and he taught me that. That's but it's so funny, funny to like look at his relationship. I was going like, to say good advice, advice yeah. but like maybe I not took the best from model. You and he was, your yeah. wife made you go on the red table talk. I talking mean, I've her. never really been one to be codependent, but someone in Malibu, like one of my ex-boyfriend's friends was talking about relationships and he said that and it has literally stuck with me since because you see so many of these half people looking for someone to complete them instead of like really becoming whole and finding their identity and, you know, becoming the person that they're supposed to be. And then meeting another whole person when was your last relationship four and a half years ago oh wow. that was very specific oh my, yeah. honestly i'm giving you a four fucking, and a half years ago 20 yeah. minutes and six seven eight seconds huge round of applause i think you might be the first girl i've ever met that doesn't hop from relationship to relationship or didn't have something already lined or up already lined up uh, no no we um I have nothing bad to say about him. I think he's a great guy. Um, we had going into the relationship, we had uh, like, I don't really know if I believe opposites attract because I don't know how you could date someone where like any hobby or passion they have, you don't want to partake in it because you don't like it. But we were very, you know, we both liked to travel. We liked food. We both liked, you know, we had very similar interests and I 
don't have anything bad to say about him. He was a great guy. We just grew apart and he broke up with me. Um, and then we got back together and we were together for like a year, but then he ended up breaking up with me again. Um, and I think that like, I like, I mean, a lot of people shit on their ex and they're like, fuck him. He's, or the guys will be like, she's a crazy. Yeah. I think that speaks loads and volume. Like when all the people vent to me, that says so much more about you than the person you were dating. Cause mm-hmm. you once loved this person at some point in your life and you will always hold love for them in your heart, no right. matter how much time that passes. So yeah, I mean, we just we just grew apart. I mean, if whatever questions you want to ask me, happy to answer. I just want to know, like, what what do you want to know about it? What does it feel like as a female to get broken up with? Um, it definitely was. I definitely hit a very low point and saw a side of me that I didn't know I had in me. So I am like very independent, very confident, very outgoing. I love to be alone. Like I don't need a relationship. Would it be Mm -hmm. nice to meet somebody? Of course. But you know, I'm not like on apps or when I go out to dinner with my friends, like clocking the guy at the bar. Um, and so, and throughout our relationship, we kept it very, you know, he hung out with the boys, I hung out with the girls, we did stuff together. So we, there was never codependency in the relationship. But when he broke out with me the first time, because I didn't necessarily see it coming, you know, once you get out of it, and you look back on it, you see like, okay, you, you guys were growing apart, you were mm-hmm. fighting more about small things. Um, but I didn't see it coming at that time. So I was in like a really bad state. I like begged, I pleaded. I was like, Mm. why, like, what can we do to make this work? And, uh, you know, he had already made his mind up because I don't think anyone wakes up and is like, today's the day I'm going to fucking break up. I think it's like, you, you know, you're, you're, you're thinking on it for some time. And I, like literally laid in bed for two months. I got bronchitis. I lost 15 pounds. Like I was really down to the lowest point of my life. And we end up getting back together. Um, they come back. <laughs> wait, wait. How, how, how long after the breakup did you Like two months. Up? So we were like were broken no up contact? for like... T- what? Were you in no contact? Yeah, we were like, we were in no contact. I also think that's really important. So we were like in no contact. We were broken up for two months. And he ended up getting back from a trip and was like, do you want to go for a hike? And so obviously because I was such in a low broken spot, like I leaped at the fucking opportunity to go on a hike. Yeah, Yeah, I want to go on a hike. I'll go watch paint dry with you Um, because I was in such a low place. But if I had taken that time to really heal and get back to my best self, would I have gone on that hike? I don't know because I would have been in a different place place and mindset so we we went on a hike we got back together we were together for like another year and a half then he broke up with me the exact same way but I promised myself when we got back together that like I would never let myself get to that point again Mm. because like can I ask not to cut you off but I'm I'm super interested like so you have this two-month period super difficult right yeah I don't imagine you did a ton of self work in those two. I could be wrong, but like no, it's a I just short, grieved. It's a short, I didn't right. do self work yeah. at all. I just grieved. And so were you, like when you got back into the relationship, cause I've had this problem too, where like I get so good and I do my work and I meditate and I write and I feel amazing. And the moment they come back, I'm like, well, I don't have to do that anymore. Cause like that person kind of fills that, yeah. that gap for me. Yeah. Were you able to work on your stuff? when you guys got back together or was it just like, Oh my God, I'm so grateful to be back in it. Yeah. So like I said, like when it came to, when it came to like confidence, independence, healthy, independent relationship, we were not codependent. We didn't have any of those issues, but obviously I was at a really low point, like self-esteem and just, I thought this was the love of my life and he breaks up with me unexpectedly. So when we got back together, um, no, I did not, continue to grieve or go through the feelings and emotions of the relationships because he was the band-aid to the pain I was Mm, feeling. But I will say for that whole year and a half, we got back together. It's a lot of people think when they exit a relationship and they re-enter a relationship, it's the same relationship. It's a new relationship. I don't Mm -hmm. think you've been broken up a month, a week. Like you're not just like picking up where you left off. Like it's kind of like dating Mm. again and hopefully finding that honeymoon phase again. But I think like my body didn't allow me to really fully be engulfed in the relationship. Like I wasn't holding any grudges towards him and I wasn't resentful, but I think subconsciously my body and my mind was like protecting me from, you know, investing and getting too deep in it. And even like intimately, I would struggle. I was going to say, how does that manifest? Yeah. Like even intimately, I was, yeah, like, uh, like, 
I would consider myself a sexual person and it just went from like that to not being that when we re-entered the relationship. So I was just like, uh, like, of course, like we still like had a sex life, but I struggled to like want it or be connected, you know, like, and sometimes I'd want it over as fast as possible. Um, damn. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, because well, then I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, want, you, want, you want it over done. Best six seconds of your life. You want it done fast. You I'm, your well, guy. I'm your yeah. guy. I'm your man. Yeah, like so. I my like yeah. So my body was subconsciously protecting me, not just in, intimately, but just in all aspects. And I mean, with reason, because it happened a year and a half later the same way um the breakup happened and I, but th when that happened i just i didn't even cry it just yeah. like at this point it's like this is a joke like it's like well they do say to like i mean obviously when i went through my breakup all my tiktok is like about like no contact oh my god yeah don't do this don't do this and you kind of went against everything and since you were like begging for him back no and no, then, no i wasn't i didn't we were in no contact for the two months oh i thought you said immediately you were begging no when for he him bro back. broke up with me oh that's oh, like okay. in that oh, moment yeah, yeah. i'm like crying and like what's mm. happened i feel like this is out of nowhere like this is something i did like in that moment but then we did go no contact and uh we were not communicating <laughs> I, I hope to god i would not beg for two months <laughs> oh fuck i did that after my first breakup because that was my first heartbreak bro you should have seen the message I was yeah sending. dude two months like, light I'll do whatever. Like, yeah, I'm so dude. sorry. I'm work on myself. I'll do whatever you want. Like this, that, and the other. Well, me dude. personally, I hope for two months, I would never do that. Um, but they also say too, that you don't leap back right when he wants you to come back. Yeah. Like you got to play a little no, yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like, so yeah. like we did the hike and we were like playing the whole platonic bullshit. Mm -hmm. And then like, which is, our, which is bullshit. By the yeah, way. yeah. Bullshit. Like, never like we have been no like way. together Correct. for yeah, three right, years. Right. Now it's like, Oh yeah, let's just go on a hike. Right. And like, are we, we did have like his guy friends and my girlfriends all got on really well. Like we all hung out. We did that. So then like we would go out as like group settings as like friends, but it's just, it never works. Just, just being friends. Um, there's too much intimacy historically. Yeah. I don't even know if on, like, I don't even know if you can be friends with an ex. Okay. That actually brings me to like a question. We asked this to, to Juana, Juana last week and she was pretty adamant that you could be just platonic friends with a man. Okay. Well, what, what wait, with it? a man or with a guy you used to date? Well, the, there's a difference. We, we, I said that women can't be friends with men because the second that you're like, you give them the chance, they're going to hop. So you wouldn't be just my friend? If you hit me up at 2 a.m., then I'll probably be there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 dude, I agree with you. So you have ulterior motives, <laughs> both of you? I don't know. No, I don't know. Saying. I don't know if like, it, it isn't an ulterior motive, but if the opportunity presented itself, I don't think, I wouldn't be like, you know what? Our friendship is too important and not take action. Well, I hit you up eight years ago. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. We should look at the timestamp. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, do you think that guys and girls can just I want you to clarify. Friends, is platonic? that platonically or is it with someone that you used to date? Because I have different Well, we points. got on the topic of ex because we were like, oh, are you friends with any of your exes? No, I know. But like, do you want, like, do, can you be friends with someone of the opposite sex platonically or can you be platonically friends with someone you used to date and fuck? Do you know what I mean? Like, the those former. Are, the former. Just friends. Okay. Like, like, like gen general human beings. Yeah. I can if I'm not attract i don't find them attractive well i That's mean exactly. ob yeah, obviously yeah. but what yeah exactly like i mean you're not trying to like fuck the like with like the witch of the west yeah. so it's like i get but that. i i mean when i got in my relationship and people i mean i'm gonna go through questions here they're like oh why aren't you friends with adelia anymore so i used to talk to this girl adelia and we hooked up and then i got in a relationship and i think it's inappropriate for me being in a new relationship to then be friends with someone that I fucked. I, I, agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I it's agree. like, I have to obviously put my relationship first and I wouldn't want my girlfriend hanging out with, guys hanging out with some with, yeah. dude that she hooked up with. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> There's so many different lanes here. Um, but we only hooked up one time and then we were friends after that. But doesn't matter. Like, doesn't yeah, matter. I agree that I think that like if you've, uh, if you've hooked up with some, like, okay, if it was like a one night off, then like, and you don't even see the person, then who gives a fuck? But like, if it was someone that you like were hanging out with, hooking up with, going to dinner, hooking up with, and then you entered a new relationship, then like I get, then yeah, like whether whatever gender it is, I don't think they should be seeing platonically just friends while they're in a relationship with someone they used to hook up with. Because also, 
I'm not saying, I don't know this girl's name, but I do think that if that is the case and someone's not like totally understand you're in a relationship that would make your like partner uncomfortable, I think they have ulterior motives like to like get you to like want to be with the, am I making sense here? Or they're selfish. Wait, and you they think, just, like, yeah, or they're selfish. Like, I don't know. I just think that like, I do think people can be platonically just friends with the opposite sex, but that's yeah. If you're not attracted to them and you don't have banter, like if I'm attracted to a guy and we have banter and we continue to hang out and chemistry grows, then I'm going to want to explore I, I guess like you can be friends with the opposite sex until the opportunity presents itself. Is that just kind of like, we're just saying guys, like guys, specifically. girls hold the key, right? Like to hooking up a guy's typically probably always down. They're the pursuer. They're the pursuer. Right. So if you're friends and then you're drunk one night and then the yeah. girl's like, Oh, let's just, hook yeah, up. like I like, ever want to smush. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you have a lot of girlfriends that you're just friends with that you find attractive? I don't, I'm trying to think. I don't really have female friends because you're and, preventing and, and, that and, from and happening. And like, well, just like I don't. Know, I'm I'm more of like a having a good time kind of guy. I want to hang out with my guy friends. Like, yeah. like they just. I feel like they're. I have naturally a better, more authentic like relationship with my guy friends. I can be more myself with my guy friends. Mm -hmm. I and I'm not, and I'm not saying that like the girls in our friend group aren't awesome and I'm not friendly with them, but I don't consider them like. My close friends. friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do not have a close female friend that the, I have not the hooked up with. The only close female friend I have who is like one of my best friends is my ex. Mm -hmm. And that's, oh, so as, you are that's friends as with complicated as it gets. Mm, yeah. Yeah, but she knows as well as I do that we're not just friends. Yeah. Like there's too much history there for it to just be like, oh, you're going on a date? Very cool. What's the guy's name? I'd fucking freak out. So you basically both don't have any platonic friends. Female friends. Female friends. Yeah. I do, and I would just I do hit not, up. No. I mean, I used to for sure when I was vlogging, but and then what happened? Like, there's no, there's no one that I'm going to be like, "Hey, uh, lady, I fell come. off," so they didn't want to fucking hang no. out with me anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. I can't call a girl and be like, "Hey, lady, let's watch the game today." I would. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd ever do that. Yeah. Nor have I. Right. I mean, what's the? I'm literally trying to think. I'm like, oh my god, like I don't think I have any female friends that I've never hooked up with. You don't have any female friends you've never hooked up with. You're a womanizer. Definition. Wait, definition. Definition of womanizer again? It's like the female. It's like the male version of like basically a whore. Like they, they, they know. They know all how to say all the right things. They do all the right things. They like you know. They know how to get women in bed. I will. Well, first and foremost, I've been in a relationship for two years. Okay. So. Well, previously, because you said just all of your female friends, historically. And I, can I just say this? I've hooked up with most of them one time, mm. and it was drunk. Wait, that's kind of interesting. Never why, again. Why, why one time? Because uh, it wasn't meant to happen in the first place because they were drunk. Why one time? Okay. What is it, Here's the thing. What is it about like Here's one something. time? Yeah. I, I'm not, honestly, I'm not a very sexual person. I have only hooked up with three people sober. I will not have sex with someone sober if I'm not in a relationship. I don't know why. I, like if I go I, out and get drunk and it happens, then it happens. But if I'm sober on a Friday night, I'm not like hitting girls up to come over. Yeah. I just, I have to have like a, f I treat sex as like, it's important. It's, it's chemistry. It's emotional. And when I just hook up when I'm drunk, it's like, I don't care about it's it. It's so empty and sad. And, and I weird. don't want to hook up with a random girl and share like something passionate that, and know that I'm not passionate about it. I feel that. That is very mature of you to and, say. And to hear that, it's refreshing for me because I feel like I, it, men, I, the things I hear are just not that. I, Mark and I have had this conversation a number of times where like, and it's bad advice, but generally the advice for guys is like, go hook up with something to get, it's just the worst. Yeah. It's the most horrible, empty, disgusting feeling. Like that's what everyone said to me person. after you're like, and I'm like, dude, I, yeah. no, dude, tequila no, shots. No. Fuck, you need to fuck a bitch tonight. I'm like, bro, yeah. no. I, that's the last thing I want to do right now. So is the one time thing like, you know, you've got a friendship built with them. And so you're like willing to explore it. And then that compatibility isn't there, so you never do it again. Is that kind of the, like the thought process behind the hookup? I don't. I don't know. I think uh, 
it just happens and then it's like oh yeah we're still friends like it was, we were just drunk and had fun whatever we were the only two options. i think it's the drunk thing we were the only two options <laughs> <laughs> i think it's the drunk thing yeah it's a common thread yeah it's Mark like it, it's up. like they're he's like you know because he especially after you just said that you want to have a connection with someone especially if you're gonna hook up with them sober so it's like unless you and your girlfriends are gonna continue to just drink and fuck then yeah like so i think it's like the drunk thing i think it's like you're drunk you're more susceptible it's like you're fun you're loose you're open but then once you're both sober, it's like, okay, well, like, are we, like we're just friends. Yeah. yeah like, really are we actually into each other right. that way? We'll fuck, but we're just <laughs> friends. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So is that platonic? Is that, is, that, is that platonic? We'll fuck, but we're just friends. Like if you got a new relationship, I'd be happy for you. I don't, I don't know. I zoned out for a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Happen. Oh, absolutely. So like, <laughs> Is, is the definition of like a platonic fr- like friendship with the opposite six su- the opposite you got sex? It. You got it, girl. Is that you'll fuck, but you're just friends. And no. If, and if the other one gets in a relationship, then you're rooting for them. No, platonic is purely like I've never mm. seen you naked. I've never touched you. Like we're platonic. We're all platonic. Well, I can look. We're all platonic. Not me and you, but no, I'm just kidding. I can look sees. Yeah. Like, look sees not. That's not platonic. Well, no one's platonic just, in today's day and age because of OnlyFans. You know, we've all. Uh, yeah, like I feel like. Like my definition of platonic, and I'm pretty sure like Miriam Webster also is that <laughs> Miriam Webster, get out of here. I'm pretty sure it's like you haven't sexually engaged with this person at all. Not even a peeksies. I'm I'm sure like if you can look at them, but yeah. that's still like I think that's just human nature of people. Do you have looking platonic male curious. friends? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. Do you just hang out? Like, what do you guys do? Um, <laughs> yeah. We- <laughs> I'm so with that. What do you guys do? <laughs> like if you're alone on Friday night and you're like lonely, you're like, hey, dude, want to come over and watch a movie and no, have a charcuterie um, board? That's kind of like a date. Sounds awesome. Yeah, that does sound like great. Yeah, um, yeah I have platonic male friends. Mm. I'm like kind of similar to you. Like I don't really care to sleep around. It does not interest me. Um, if I'm going to hook up with someone, even if it doesn't necessarily become a relationship, like I want there to be like mental stimulation and chemistry and banter, cause mm-hmm. that's just going to make it that much better. Um, so my like guy friends, I think they, they know th- that I'm like that. And so they just don't even necessarily try, but also like, I'm a great girlfriend to have around cause like I'm a great wing woman. I love going to the strip club. Like I'll like, <laughs> I'll go to the strip club with like my guy friends Damn. and like and br- your boyfriend will be there. Did I what? You'll bring your boyfriend to the strip club. You don't care. Um, actually my last relationship, I was the first person to ever take my boyfriend to a strip club. So I'm not a strip club guy. Yeah. But- no, a lot of people aren't, but a lot of guys are like, I like, if you're like in Vegas or something and it's like, Oh, like let's go to the strip club. Yeah, like sure. Like gigs. food's amazing. Actually. I don't really? know if you've ever had the food at a strip club. It's no. really good. Um, um, I used to, so I played football in college and, and down the street, we had a Hustlers. Okay. And on Tuesdays, it was, we would go there after practice, and it was seven fifty for a steak and a Diet Coke. They serve food at yeah, Hustlers? It, it ruled. Steak? <laughs> yeah. Seven dollars. Are you thinking of Hooters? University of Redlands, dude. Yes, bro. Hooters we, or we Hustlers? Did, no, dude, I'm telling you, it was Hustlers. <laughs> hustlers? It was titties out, I'm telling you. That's so St- crazy, because it's I, like, uh, nowadays it's just a lingerie <laughs> shop. It ruled. I went to a strip club for my buddy's birthday party. We went afterwards, and I brought my disposable camera. In, in was, L.A.? Yeah. You can't bring those, I don't, right? I was doing it. I oh took cameras God. in a strip I mean, yeah. I, I, I've taken cameras, too. I mean, it just, you know, yeah. When the obnoxious flash goes off, you're just like, I didn't know. But, I mean, I, I will say strip clubs make a difference where they're located. Like, Miami, Vegas, I think L.A. strip clubs suck. Yeah, they're trashy. Um, they're so awful. Uh, but, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, if the guys want to go to the strip club, I'm not going to be like, no. Like, I have a great time. I eat. I drink. I talk to the girls like it's fine um is there a jealousy factor that comes in ever or you're like whatever it's my I'm idea i'm like yeah. let's go to the so strip club. would you be comfortable with your man getting like a lap dance from a stripper uh yeah i uh, previously but you're involved are you bisexual no i'm not involved i'm not bisexual either but i'm just so secure and like i'm not threatened by like we're all here these are dancers they're doing yeah, a job, it's a job. Yeah. yeah like i'm not th- i'm not insecure and threatens like that like if he would go alone is that a problem um I don't know. Hey, honey, I've never you been... wait here. I'm going to go rub on some tits. Yeah, I've never been in that situation. Like I said, my last relationship, he had never been to a strip club. So I took him there for the first time with his other guy friends and my girlfriends. And we all just like went together. I got him his first lap dance. Like, I'm not threatened by that. If anything, I'm like throwing dollar bills because it's fun. It's like, and it's also Also, kind of... if you're going to leave me for a stripper, 
fucking go, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, that's probably the, yeah, the yeah, common factor. Like, it's a job yeah. for them. Like, I think it's fun. It's just a fun environment. I don't think you need to be jealous or threatened. Like, I, I, I don't know. Me, personally, I think, like, if we're... It's a group of guys and girls, and we're all hanging out, and, like, someone's getting a lap dance. Like, it's, like... And you're sitting right there. Like, your man's not going to be that dumb to, like you know go off with her alone right in front of you so i don't know that does not make me feel insecure or threatened being at a strip club with a guy that i'm dating you also didn't answer the question like a little while i know alone what do you do with your platonic guy friend (laughs) what are you guys doing right right um all types of things we'll go to dinner um well they usually invite me to dinner so go to dinner do they Um, pay are they paying yeah they pay that's a date Um, that's not a date. I think a, I, I've, a lot of my man friends pay for me because it's just how they're raised. Like they won't, won't let a woman like even like open the car door for herself. It's just it's just car how door. Sure, splitting the bill though. On no. a, like a, if I'm on going a to dinner with a bunch dinner, of friends and we're all here. just friends, everyone's throwing their car down. Splitting it. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like they just like that's just like what they're used to, I guess. Like they they have girl. Anytime I go out with or if if it's like a group of guys and like three girls, all the guys put their car down. That doesn't mean it's a date. Um, one on one though, like hey, let's go to dinner. No, and it's, no, no, no. Yeah. It's usually I, it's usually yeah. not one on one. It's usually a group. Like maybe I'll go to dinner and there's like three guys and then they invite girls and there's five girls and then I'm an additional girl or like Barney's Beanery. Quick math, sorry. Wait, let's talk about this because we invited you out last weekend. Right. And we went to what's that place called? You did La Bohem. Well, we La Bohemians, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, they, they, well, they, they, where were we at before? What? Laro Hardware. Okay, so we and had they about, said that it was like packed; they couldn't yeah. get a table, and, and so she, they were gonna go there. I want to tell this story. So she's like, uh, "You were supposed to come, and you bailed." I thank was. You, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, did you watch The Accountant? By the way, I did. I, the great, highlight. It's a great <laughs> film. Wait, <laughs> great movie. Where yeah. did that come from? Because I was like, I was we like, were I'm texting. Just, yeah, I was, we were texting, and I was like, honestly, like I'm in sweatpants, like no makeup, like I look like a porn star, like because I was. <laughs> I was in like was a juicy tracksuit no with oh, like a it. bun and like glasses. So I had like a juicy velvet tracksuit and like a bun, and look, which I don't care. I'll go places not ready, but it was just like, I don't know. It just felt like such a track. Anyways. Anyway. Sorry guys. Camera died real quick. Um, yeah. You, you watched the account and she sent it to me. Anyways, we're getting off topic here. We are. She was supposed to meet up with me. She fucking bailed. Okay. I got stood up and I had to hang you out with- You were with a friend. Okay. Yeah. Two don't friends. Act like, yeah. You had to leave me with Tyler Straub. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> I came. I anyways, showed up. Yeah. So we you get it. You were alone waiting for me. So we go to La Bohem because she's supposed to meet us there and she doesn't. And then Iggy meets us there. So I mean, you this- also go there because you couldn't get a table at Laurel Hardware. So no, we I, did I get a table a actually. As we left, they said, oh, table's oh, available. Well, whatever. Try and do see. Whatever. But I'm not, I'm not mad about it because La Bohem was actually a sick place. It is. And then Friday nights, it's it jazz popping. night. Yeah. I they're playing that. jazz. So we were sitting next to this uh, round table of like seven Russian girls and they were celebrating her birthday. And the girl whose birthday it was was pretty much wearing a wedding dress. It was kind of weird. It was a weird fit. Yeah. yeah. They had very odd fits on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we look over, me and Tyler. This is before Iggy gets here. And there's all these young girls. And then there's an older Russian woman literally falling asleep. She's like this. And me and Tyler think it's funny. We're like, yo, let's send her a shot. So we send this like, how old do you think she was? 65? She's late 50s, early 60s probably. 60 something year old woman, a shot of tequila. Mm-hmm. She looks over at us. She like, she's like, oh, thank you. And like starts sipping on it. And then she grabs the lime, sticks it in her mouth and looks at Tyler and goes like, starts winking. And we're just like, what is going on? So Tyler's like, this? Tyler's like, yo, come over here. He waves her over. She comes and sits down next to me. I don't know why she picked me because Tyler's the one. She that, felt that good boy energy. For sure. She knows what she's doing. So she sits next to me. I scoot into the booth and she probably sat with us for what, 30 minutes? It was an hour, dude. It was an hour. It was an hour? She was there for. So she, she abandoned her whole, her right. niece. Like <laughs> she came to sit down and they just proceeded to engage in an hour long conversation yeah. about her life, which is Which is insane. what I'm getting to. Yeah. We start talking to her like, oh, what do you do? She's like, oh, I live in Marina Del Rey. Like, I'm retired. And we're like, oh, what did you used to do? I am a retired Russian porn star. Oh, sick. <laughs> and we were like, what's your name? Oh, I wrote it down. But I, I can't figure out if she's bullshitting because we tried to Google it and we couldn't find her. I feel like Nadia that's Stormy. not... Nadia Stormy. Nadia Stormy. Nadia Stormy. I just, I just feel like that's not a joke you would play. 
I play that joke all the time. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, no, no, no. But like, Wait. as an older lady. So then we're at like Tyler. He, this guy is next level. He starts asking her like, what's the biggest you've ever had? What's the most you've had in one day? This, that, and the other. And then he goes, yo, show us some of your tricks. And she's like, what do you want to see? And he, I had a, a dirty martini with three olives. Good boy. I love dirty martinis. And he, he's like, put all three of those olives in your mouth right now. She takes my toothpick with the dirty martini and goes. Wow. And like sucks the olives. Didn't eat them. Just sucked them. And it, yeah, that was and then put them back, which is gross to me. But, and then they wanted us to go to the Abbey. Right. But there was a reason you were telling this story. That's funny. That's, that was funny. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like, <laughs> okay. I thought it was like, There's you know, no resolution. No, she didn't I, come I over we and like, we didn't have a game. Then there. she came over, we triple teamed her. That's what I'm saying. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, but we're, we're trying to figure out whether or not she was bullshitting and just joking around. Right. I don't think she was. If you've Googled her name and nothing comes up, then yeah. that would be shocking. Yeah, but even she's if it's 60. from the 80s. Even, yeah, but st- once it's up, it's up. I mean, like, so, like, even if it's from the 80s, I mean, you should be able to at least find one photo or one video or something. Maybe we're spelling Maybe we spelled it, it incorrectly. If anybody knows how to spell Nadia in Russian. Actually, but then again... It was like VHS back then. Yeah, yeah. it was tapes, baby. Yeah, tapes, baby. Yeah. Cedric it? the Entertainer yeah, was there too. That was pretty oh, cool. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. Said. It wasn't online. I wanted to ask you something. I think this is a really cool thing. So you are in. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I how think cool it's a really it cool thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Well, we've been talking about dating for forty minutes. Uh, <laughs> so you were in one of Daniel Tosh's probably most popular skits ever. Oh wow! I didn't know that it was that popular. So funny. That's cool. How did you land that role? I auditioned for it. So the audition nice, was... Nice, typical. Sorry, sorry to interject. <laughs> it's like pretty typical. Yeah. yeah like yeah, what yeah. Did, well, how'd you land it? Did you, Tell us. So I auditioned for the role. Um, basically, I just had to be like standing there holding my stomach crying on camera. And this was a self-tape. It wasn't in the room. And then I booked it. And then, uh, yeah, I, we went to set and filmed that video. Um I mean, yeah, that's like, I mean, it was very quick, very short. It's interesting because a lot of people say that he's a really mean guy, but I, and like really mean to his crew and like just in general, it's just an ass, but I didn't like sense that vibe from him. I felt like he's just very serious and executing what he's doing. Um, yeah, but I didn't know it was that popular of a skit. It was for Beats by Dre. What it, skit was it? So you remember the old Beats by Dre commercials when they were like, I'm the man, I'm the man. You put Great. the headphones on and you it drown out. It blocks out everything. You drown out everything. So he takes her, his girlfriend, to an abortion clinic. Oh my God. And there's people out front and they're like yeah. screaming and he puts the Beats by Dre mm-hmm. on. Yeah. It's like, I'm the man, I'm the man. <laughs> pretty and good. everyone's screaming yeah, at him. Yeah. Dude, I, that was probably one of the funniest skits I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, I'm like, so he's basically like, I'll pay for it. And then he's like, half. The abortion? Yeah. He's like, I'll pay for half. And then I'm like, whatever. And then I get out of the car and I'm like bawling crying. These people are like, murderer, child <laughs> killer, all this. And he just puts on the Beats and it's just like. <laughs> pretty funny. So pretty funny. funny. What Wait, was it like working with Daniel Tosh? Um... Well, I mean, I feel like though it, it was very, the, like I said, he's very, he doesn't really like, you know, communicate much just like personally. It's just more like he's here to do a job and deliver his lines and do his shit and then leave. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought he was a pleasant guy and I do looking at that video now feel like, I don't even know how I got casted because I feel like I look way too young to be playing that role. You did look young. Yeah, like maybe it, yeah. that's like what they were going for. I mean, young girls in Hollywood. Yeah, but he's yeah, but much I was older. Like, yeah, but he's like much older. And I was, I think I was like 60, I don't know, I was very young. You were underage when you I did? I don't know how old I was. I, uh, but, I mean, you don't know how old you were. I, it was, I, don't, I don't remember, but it just like looking back at that video, I look like such a baby and like sitting next to him, I'm getting the abortion and he's paying for it. It definitely comes off to me like looks like watching it now like yeah. when i saw it when it happened i'm like yeah good for me. So that's happy. fun yeah. yeah it was so fun but like looking back at the video i'm like i don't know what dynamic they were trying to work but was he supposed to be with like an adolescent girl going to get an no. abortion because it looks i mean it looks very yeah very different is that you, your sorry go ahead because that's a controversial topic and that stirred up a lot of controversy did you get any clap from that at all no no i feel like back then nobody like really brought it up yeah like that was before the whole me too movement yeah before it, the whole, it like, was before yeah. all that for sure yeah. so i mean i didn't get any controversy from that i didn't get any like harassment or bullying but 
I think now you play that commercial, it'll be a different. Oh, I'm going to put it yeah. on TikTok yeah. right now. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Insert video. Yeah. It will be like a different reaction for sure. Is that your background acting like commercial work? Yeah. So I started modeling in Savannah and then, um, well, Georgia. first I was a competitive gymnast for 12 years. That's cool. Yeah. And then, um, I have a very all or nothing mentality and I realized I wasn't going to be going to the Olympics. Mm. I was competing at a high level, but I, you know, my wrists were starting to give out. I've had two hip surgeries. So yeah, damn, yeah. like an old man over here. I know, <laughs> but I don't perform metal like in there? one. You got metal in there Are you still what? flexible? Yeah. That's what I said, but I don't perform like one. Oh yeah. yeah. It went um, over my head. <laughs> and then, um, I, yeah, I'm very all or nothing. I didn't really care about college gymnastics. So then I started, there was like a little modeling boutique agency that opened up in Savannah. I started doing doing that I started taking commercial classes there and I really enjoyed it and so that just led me to you know it was originally was more so modeling commercial but then I got more into acting I definitely love acting that's my passion that's my baby I can just like engulf so much more of like who I am into that like I think modeling's fun but it's definitely boring like when you're just to me personally it can get boring um but well, yeah I think uh, and I don't know how you haven't gotten casted as Marilyn Monroe because you literally really? have the exact beauty mark that Marilyn Monroe has. Wow. And I feel like if you curled your hair and dyed it a little more blonde, then yeah, you could pull sure. off that look. I could pull it off. I can pull off anything. Is that... Were you ever insecure about having a beauty I mark? Was. I was. I'm so funny you bring that up because some girl was just commenting on it Saturday. And I told her... She was like, you have like two on your face and they're so perfectly placed. They're yeah. the best spot ever. And I told her growing up when I was in middle school I was really insecure about my beauty mark and I wanted to get it removed from my face really? because you can do that it's like lasering or they'll cut it and then like citrus it back mm -hmm. um and I wanted to get it removed for the longest time because no one else had it on their face and I just I don't know I just felt like it was odd but I'm really glad that I didn't get it removed of course but growing up yeah I didn't necessarily think it was all that I like it it makes your face unique like I feel like you would look way different without it i know i actually did on an app like like i removed it to you see deleted one. it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on an app oh, no. like you know years later like now i love it it's a part of me but i was like if i had made that decision what would my face have looks like and it's just like very vanilla without the it same yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, but it's just like i don't know it gives it a little extra like oomph without it it's just like i just look like a basic white bitch from savannah georgia which is like what I am, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit about your background. Are you broken? No, I'm just kidding. Jeez. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I think I'm at my like best place ever. Okay. Good, good. for you. That's awesome. Are Where does parents? that come from? Where does what come from? That best place. Um, like, where does that come from? I think just honestly, you know, we're talk. this is just going to get us back into relationship talk, but we were talking about relationships and I've never been that person to get out of a relationship, get back into one or hopefully have one lined up before I even get out. So I don't have to yeah. deal with the pain because yeah, I already right. have Bob waiting for me. Yeah. Like not, I, Bob. <laughs> not Bob, not Bob, <laughs> not Bob, definitely not Bob. <laughs> so I've like <laughs> never been that person. And after my last relationship, which I've been in relationships beforehand, but this last one, I don't know. I just like really, I've always just been like, my mom raised us to be very independent, very confident, very outgoing, good on our own. So I've always been that way. So I just think I'm so focused on me, myself and I, and I love going to dinner alone. I'll travel alone. I was in Europe and like Spain and Istanbul for 57 days over the by summer yourself? by myself. That's, that's why I've always been so scared to do that. But What's yeah. it like traveling scared. alone? What's it like traveling alone? It, it's it's a great experience and I loved every part of it but like for someone who struggles with like even going to dinner alone or going to the movie alone but wants to travel alone my advice would be to like start small obviously like don't just book a trip to Bali alone like go to dinner alone go to coffee shop alone go to a movie alone go to go, Arizona for a weekend yeah go to Arizona for a weekend and then you know work your way up to traveling to Istanbul and Spain and Italy and Europe and Paris and being there for 57 days on your own because you know it's it's not like you can just like oh shit this is weird I'm in Arizona like you can you can just pop right back mm -hmm. you can't do that so I think if you like love being alone like I do then you'll be a great candidate for it if you like maybe lack that confidence and you know don't really love being alone and kind of like to have people around build yourself up to it but I had a great time I mean there occasionally there was sometimes I'd go to London and there'd be people I knew there so I'd meet up with them which was good because I mean, being alone for that long, you can kind of start to go crazy. I did have meltdowns where I like broke down crying just because like plans were not going to plan. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I mean, I, I, I loved it. So that's my point. It's like, I just love to travel alone. I'll eat alone. I'll do anything alone. Would I like to find somebody? Absolutely. But in the meantime, if I don't, everything that I want to do that I do with a partner, I can do by myself. You're just not, I guess you're not willing to put your life on hold until you meet that person, which is cool. Do people put their, why would, in what way would someone put their life like on hold? Like save all those experiences you're saying? Yeah. So like, I actually, I actually kind of have that mentality a little bit where like, I've never really had that like European trip and I've always wanted to. And I sort of want to experience that with, I want to share that with someone yeah. versus just doing it alone. So it's always like prohibited me from just going and doing it. Yeah. I'm like a little, for whatever reason, I'm a little scared of traveling by myself. Yeah. That like to that capacity. Yeah. Like internationally. Which like is understandable. A like yeah. a, a, most people feel how you feel. Um, I'm like not saying by any means do what I do. Cause it's delusional. Like I just, it's just what I do, but I like, would it have been nice to have a friend there or a partner there? Absolutely. But even when it comes to like friend traveling, there's like a criteria because you know, those people where it's like, you just want to stay in, but they want to go explore every museum. But today you just want to stay in cause you're kind of exhausted yeah. and like, really, you like you're not going to come with me. Like in the guilt trip. We're you. only in round one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they guilt trip you or like those people where it's like, you're, you're like, I'm going to go do this. And they're like, but I thought we we're going to do this. So it's like to travel with me, like you really also have to be good on your own mm. guy or girl. doesn't matter. Mm. So if you want to go, I don't want to go cool, chill. Like this is both of our trips. Yes. We're doing it together but at the same time like you're not always going to want to do everything together but i get like that experience i dude the world is massive i have so many yeah. other places i want to experience with someone and but like if it doesn't ever happen for whatever reason i'm single for life like i'm going to go do those things but i get what you're saying you want to like experience europe with someone for the well, first I just time want to experience like i enjoy experiencing new things with a, like i guess my person if you yeah. Know, whatever that, whoever that person is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is something that you learned from traveling across Europe by yourself? Um, probably one of the biggest, like, I would say. You have to go Iggy. Yeah, dude. Fuck. We're losing Iggy. We're going to continue. Please. Are yeah. you staying here? Or are you going home? I'm just going to take it in the room. Okay. Yeah. If I finish up, I'll just come back. Up. All right, cool. Illy. Iggy has a meeting. I'll be I'll be Illy, XOXO, Gossip Girl. God, thank God he's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, probably. Um, I feel like I... Because like I said, even though I was alone and I was traveling on planes alone and staying at hotels alone, occasionally because everyone's in Europe for the summer... Sometimes I was in Spain and there'd be people that were also from LA there. So I'd meet up with them for lunch or something. London, I probably had the most activity mm -hmm. uh, of like seeing and meeting people I know. Paris was, which is funny because it's like the city for love and it's yeah. like city of romance. And for my first time ever in Paris, I went alone, which it actually, I loved every moment of it. Um, but what did you learn about yourself? I would say that okay. I think... I was prefacing it with there was people occasionally and then there was sometimes not people, mm -hmm. but no one was traveling on the trip with me. And I would say that what I learned a lot about myself is that myself, like in terms of enjoying situations, I would rather be in an alleyway and a bottle of wine with like a group of people that I really love and have a great time with versus like on a mega yacht with people you've just met, you can't stand. It's all about the company that you're yes. with. Yeah, like it's the, it's all about the company. And I really learned that because I was in those situations where I'm on like, you know, these boats and it's just like these, it's like, who are these people? Who are these girls? Who are these guys? It's just like, and like no one really cares about anyone. Like they'll yeah. leave you. So um, I would rather, yeah, like be with a, like, I, so that's what I learned. I know that's not really like deep and philosophical into like what I learned about me, but I did learn that it doesn't matter how appealing or glamorous uh, invite maybe if it's not company that you want to be around it's not going to be a fulfilling experience did you ever were you ever that girl that's like got sucked into the LA life of like luxury and yachts and this and that yeah I mean I've definitely I wouldn't say I got sucked in I've definitely I, I've been on planes and boats and I've you know had luxurious experiences but it just kind of came with like friends and very natural. Yeah. It wasn't like I've had a sugar daddy or anything. It just came with like the environment that I was with, with my friends. But I mean, I don't really go out anymore because I just don't enjoy it. So I love being home alone, watching the accountant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
and I purely like love being home alone, but can I find, do I have a great time when I go out? Yeah. I'm super extra extroverted, talkative, outgoing. Like, mm-hmm. so I know how to be home, but I know how to be out also. But to this point now I love staying in because when I go out, it's just like, I'm sure you can relate to this cause you've been in Los Angeles for some time. It's the same people going to the same few restaurants, going to the same few lounges, going to the same clubs, the same after parties. Like I'm not, I don't want to go to a club anymore. Like I want to have a nice dinner, drinks. I'd rather go to like Top Golf with a group of people than like go to a club, you know? Activity. Yeah, an activity. Yeah. An escape room. I don't know, even like Barney's Beanery and like shoot some pool and yeah. eat some food, like anything like that. Like I like activities. That's the point I'm in now because when I go out in Los Angeles, it's just like the same people. It's very redundant. It's not refreshing. Yep. But when I travel, like if I'm in New York or if I'm in Miami or if I'm in London, I'm open to going to dinner in a lounge and because it's exciting, it's, it's new, new, it's fresh. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. you've never been in this place, like this restaurant you've never been in. You're seeing people that you've never met once in your life. So that that's then exciting again. But in Los Angeles, my social life is pretty dead. That's literally dis- I'm so glad you just said that because that is how I feel exactly what you said. I mean, I was raised in Ohio and what I enjoyed growing up was we would sit around the campfire, have some beers with friends, play some music. That's what I like. I like staying home now because when you first moved to LA, yeah, it's new and exciting and you go to all yeah. these new places, you're like all the oh, events, boo, celebrities yeah. and this and this and, and it's like cool. And I think that that's also why my last relationship was a little tough because I've been here for 10 years and I'm like, I don't care about that stuff anymore. It's not important to me. And I don't think we were on the same page. And with she like, like is, was, did she newly have moved here? Yeah, and so yeah. she like wanted to explore yeah. the social life. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That exactly. makes sense. But yeah, it was, <clears throat> I just don't like going out anymore. Yeah. And it's not cause I'm like a sad boy and I want to stay home. It's literally like the same shit every time, the same people. And it's right. like how many times in a row for 10 years straight can I go out to Soho house for drinks yeah. and then go to Fleur room. Go to catch for dinner. Yeah. Like, dude, oh my God. Like, it's you exhausting. You see the same usual suspects. So, but I get that like if you're like in Miami or New York or something, then you probably enjoy yeah. it more. Because yeah. it's like refreshing and you've never met any of these people that are in this room. Do you still enjoy traveling even though you've been everywhere? I haven't been everywhere. <laughs> well, you went to Europe for you 57 years. You make me sound days. like I like work for Nashville. <laughs> I would love to work for National Geographic. That'd be sick. Um, yeah, just to like go, I don't know what my role would be because I'm not like a wildlife photographer, but I would like, I would love to live out of a suitcase and just stay in hotels and travel the world for an occupation. Have to figure out what that occupation is. But I mean, there's still a lot of places that I want to go. Traveling gives me anxiety. When I'm away from like my base for too long and really? like I don't have my things. I get like, what are your things like this stuff? Like I can't bring all my cameras. I can't bring my computer. Like I don't have my monitor. Like I just like, I like structure. I yeah. like, uh, my routine of like my morning and stuff like that. Do you hate the image or do you care about the image that comes across if you're a girl in LA on like a yacht or a private jet? No, I don't give no. a fuck. Everyone talks about everyone regardless. Like literally, yeah. like it doesn't matter if you're not even on a mega yacht. Like people talk about people regardless. People will talk negatively about you and then the next night see you out and be like so friendly to your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. And like if you asked younger me that, maybe she would have had a different answer. But I'm to the point where I'm just like, I know who I am. People can make assumptions and judgment and, you know, assume I'm doing this or whatnot. And it really does not affect me because I like... Well, I, in, well in terms of dating, do you think you care? Because guy red flag for me is yeah she's on a private jet to miami and then she's on a yacht yeah. like i'm just like oh she can be bought and yeah. that's like kind but of what's the, perception. the like what's the red flag for you because out of curiosity may, obviously maybe it is a guy who you know invites a girl and that girl's allowed to invite six of her girlfriends like to me i just like, think that the perception of like oh she's grouped in with that type of person that's mm-hmm. who she is right so like, like it is perception. Like I'm assuming that if you're on a boat with six other girls and one rich guy, that someone's there putting out. Yeah. Well, maybe someone is there putting out. Maybe someone's not. Yeah. I don't know. I've never physically been in that situation. Death by association. Yeah. Like I've never <laughs> been in that situation. I've never seen it happen. Um, 
you know, maybe someone is, but I also, oddly enough, like many times it doesn't happen because sometimes like it's just a group of people and they just want nice, pleasant females around. Like, you know, so I mean, I've never been, been but that's like, not just what they want. I mean, maybe not. I've never seen anything like uncomfortable because like yeah. I, I don't need to be like I've. I've had a lot of luxurious experiences. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be on a fucking boat. So if something makes me uncomfortable, I have no problem getting the tender to shore. If you're in a relationship, is that something you would stop doing if it made your partner uncomfortable? Um, like, yeah. I mean, I think if I'm in a relationship, then like me and my boyfriend are hanging out and we're going on group trips and like, like, like my girlfriends are coming and his guy friends are coming and you kind of, you kind of create like your own social life and experiences with that. But like, okay, like, your ex-girlfriend, you know her character, I'm assuming, and you know the person she is, If she, but she was newly to Los Angeles. So if she was invited on like a private jet to like Super Bowl in Vegas, would you judge her for that? Knowing you know who she is because you've dated her and it's just, she's new to this. She's, I don't know where she's from, but people who aren't, haven't seen like stuff like this in their life. It's very glamorous to them. It's exciting. It's like, you know, they've never seen it. So would you judge her even though you know who she is at core? Hitting a little too close to home here. (laughs) Given real life situations. (laughs) Am I really? (laughs) We'll talk about it off camera. This is so hypothetical. We'll we'll talk. (laughs) We ain't getting into my shit. We're keeping that off the internet. That is crazy that I just hypothetically came up with a scenario, but it's also not crazy because that happens all the time. And I just know that like anybody who's from a small town and, you know, has never seen a private plane or been in a box or been on a boat, like, you know, those things are appealing to them. So they're going to, if their friends invite them to that, they're going to take the opportunity. (laughs) The way you're looking at me. (laughs) Right. Well... (laughs) Let's move on from this topic of conversation here. <laughs> Getting a little a little uncomfortable. It's all fun and games when someone else is in the hot seat, but when you're in the hot seat, you don't like it. Well, it's like what you said earlier on, right? Like I can sit here and say No, no, like you've the- talked about it on camera. What? The situation. No. Oh, you haven't. And it's like what you said. It speaks volumes about who you are as a person, how you handle the breakup. Mm-hmm. And if you see someone bashing their ex and yeah. talking shit, then yeah. what does that say about me? So I, I wouldn't think you're a bad guy. If someone came up to me and was like, I used to date him, fuck him, he lies, he's like scandalous, like he's stolen yeah. from my friend. I, I I can I can note that, but I'm not gonna make that define you. And but I'm that's get what to I'm saying. I'm you. not gonna sit here and publicly say things that happen in my relationship that would paint them in a negative light. Oh, got it, got it. So I try to keep my perspective on my ex positive for the viewers at home. Good. Because what does it achieve? What does it accomplish if I sit here and talk shit? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't even say it's talking shit, but I respect that. We, we, we'll move on from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way you're looking at me. Like, what's this bitch about no, comment? No, we're not talking about her. I have, a, I have like a circle back question for you. It's not about that. It's um, like out of curiosity... Because I think, like, obviously, trust and communication is very important in a relationship. Really? The foundation. (laughs) So, like, if you don't have that, and even, like, people are like, oh, yeah, I trust them. But then they're, like, lurking and looking at shit. Like, if you feel the need to, like, look at who they're following, go through their phone when they're asleep, like, you don't trust that person. Because, like, you wouldn't have that intuition to even do that if you trust them. Or you're just projecting. Right. So, like, trust and communication is very important. And you know, I'm using my past relationship. So if he went to Vegas with the boys, like I like trust him. I don't care if you want to cheat on me, then that's your own mistake. But like, I literally like have fun. I don't care if you're out till 4am, have fun. I'm going to bed. I'm not going to be like looked at tag stories. Like my life is not going to play detective. Mm. So how do you feel if you're in a relationship and you know, it's boys trip to Mexico? Like, you know, do you go on that boys trip to Mexico or even like, you know, you should still be able to live your life and have fun and hang Mm. out with your guy friends. Do you go to that trip to Mexico with all the boys where maybe some are in relationships, some are single. So obviously there's going to be single female, female, uh, ladies around because your guy friends that are single are going to want female energy. So just because you're in a relationship, do you stop going on boys trips because it makes your I mean, I'm not really going on boys trips. That's not really a thing dudes do. Yes, it is. Uh, Boys trips? Yeah, they go to like Mexico. To fucking Mexico, maybe for two days. But girls trips are a whole different scenario. Boys trips is like, hey, let's go golfing and drink and whatever. 
I've never gone on a boy's Mexico trip. Mexico and Miami boy trips are definitely a thing. Even Vegas well, boy Well, I don't trips. know what dudes you're hanging out with. I'm yeah. fucking an Ohio boy. Like, if I got asked to go to New Year's in Miami, I was like, no. I'm in a relationship. Why the fuck would I go to New Year's? Like, and then I got broken up with but, on New Year's Eve. But what if you went with <laughs> your... Gone. Why didn't you go with your girlfriend to Miami for I, New Year's? Because we were going through some relationship issues. Okay. So well, maybe like being on a yacht in Miami, would have solved it. Eating Nobu Malibu nah, would have made it think, better. I don't think uh, our relationship could have been saved. It but just uh, fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not like just going on boys trips. And when I'm in a relationship, I'm asking, "Can I bring my girlfriend?" On a boys trip? It's not a boys trip. That we don't do that. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I don't. Guys have, do that though. You can't speak for the whole world, and maybe, you can't maybe, speak for everybody. But listening. you're asking me. I don't do that. Yeah, you don't do that. Not, nev- none of my boys, they're always including like women. Right. So like not, you and none of your friends don't like go to like Miami for the weekend or Vegas or... I went... Here's an example of a boys trip I did. I went to Stockton for the weekend. Where's that? Geographically? Like Sacramento in Sacramento. Because <laughs> okay. my buddy, he's from there and we went golfing mm-hmm. and stayed at his house and it was just like six dudes. Mm-hmm. Was for, everyone single? For three days. No, I, that was when I first started... Yeah, in my relationship. So yeah, I went. I think you should have. Like, like I said, off camera. <laughs> can tell you some I'm not shit. Tra- okay, ask. Well, I'm not trying to like stay on the same topic. Yeah, I yeah. just like we're just teeter tottering about shit that I don't want to like. <laughs> yeah, it's, my relationship's over. Uh, I'm not trying to stay on the same topic. I was trying to ask you a question, but then yeah, I guess you're not the right candidate to ask because you've never been in a relationship where like you guys go to like boys in the Miami like to Miami or I, Mexico. I don't hang out with or, those types of dudes. Yeah, to be honest with you, my phone's on do not disturb. Uh, I just made a noise. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I just, uh, that's just not who I am. I don't know. I don't, I don't do the whole boys to Miami thing. Yeah. Okay. I kind of only, I traveled, I did a, I wish we had Iggy here so I could ask I did a boys trip to Mykonos, but I brought my girlfriend. Right. Cause I, obviously they're all trying to hook up with girls and I'm like, well, if you're all going to bring girls back every night, then I want my girlfriend here. Yeah. But also it's like, if guys were a little more smart and tactical, like they'd realize like boys trip would be better if let's say the guys who are single are sing. don't get me wrong. I think, I personally think if you're in a relationship and for whatever reason, you're boyfriend does do boys trip go have fun mm-hmm. enjoy yourself because you know at some point there's going to be a girl's trip and you're going to say go have fun enjoy yourself so it's like because there's trust and respect and communication but if guys for whatever reason you know people other partners and like girlfriends want to come or boyfriends want to come i think if guys like if you have a boys trip and the guys who are single are obviously single but they would like to bring girls back the ones who are not single if they're in a relationship and you let them bring their girlfriend it's like so much more of a safe space it's like seven guys at dinner with three girls girls feel more comfortable coming over and sitting with the girls girls you know it's like it's just much more comfortable like okay we're all going back to yours it's not oh we're going back with seven guys to their airbnb it's like there's girls so it's like it makes it more like fun and actually it probably increases the advantages not advantages <laughs> the chances advance no <laughs> i don't know Incre- the chances. increases the chances <laughs> increases the chances of like yeah like guys meeting other girls i don't even mean hooking up with them just even meeting them i just think in today's day and age it is so hard to find faithful people I agree with you. Have you ever been cheated on? No, not to my whereabouts. I've never cheated on anyone. Um, it's so hard. It's so hard to cheat. Like is it's it? so easy not to cheat. I feel like it's probably really easy to cheat also. With, no, with, think about with all this. the like. It's you have it, it, but you have to hide everything. You have to feel that guilt. You yeah. have to like. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not saying it's like an easy road. Like it's. I mean, I've never cheated. I've never been cheated on, but. Like there is a like yeah you have to change their contact name you have to hide your phone There's if they so pick much up your work. phone just to be like the Uber Eats is here and you're like <laughs> and it's exactly. like I'm just checking to see if the food's downstairs um, yeah like that when it comes to like the mental part of it I feel like it's exhaust like, I think that's why people either break up or they then start accusing their partner of cheating because they're guilty about it so they're projecting onto their partner. The way, you, the way you're looking at me. Um, no comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know the feeling. But it's hard to cheat, but also it's easy to cheat just because of the access we have. 
with like Instagram. And I think that that's why dating is so difficult now. Also that too. People yeah. like what, what are you looking for? Me? What You're are just women, asking what, like people in general. Like why I'm, can't people just be happy with like one person or like why can't people settle down? Why are, are we constantly like, oh, like I start talking to you and then wait, wait, maybe like what, what if I miss this opportunity? Like why are people so obsessed with like yeah. opportunity? I think, I mean, it's just a different times that we live in. It's a modern dating society, kind of what you saw with your family being brought up. You know, back then you bought one washing machine and dryer and it lasted for life. Yeah. You know, now things are made to break. Uh, you know, you buy a washing machine and it has a shelf life of five years and then you have to buy another one. So back then when something broke, if it did break, you took the pride and care to figure out what part needs to be replaced. Okay. And that's like, I know that's like a silly metaphor, but that transfers over into your personal relationships. If you know, something was not working out in your relationship, you took that time and care to figure out, have a sit down conversation with your wife or husband and figure out what needed improvement. Now your phone breaks you don't try to order the part off AliExpress and fix it mm -hmm. yourself. You just go to Apple and buy a new one. Your relationship's broke. Now, I don't agree with this, what I'm about to say, but I just want to preface that. But your relationship's broke. Why take the time, energy it takes to uh, fix your relationship when you can just go find something that's new and fun and honeymoon phase and exciting? I'm not saying that mentality is great because it's not an everlasting mentality. Exactly. Because if every time, okay, for a year you're dating, it's great. Shit starts getting a little rocky. Oh, okay when the going is tough you get going mm -hmm. and then you're in another great relationship for a year it will just constantly be new people so it's right. not sustainable but i think that's why because people don't have to whether it's silly electronics or mechanics people don't have to take the time and care and really fix that re relationship they can just it's everything so ever changing and obviously yeah like social media does not help dating apps do not help uh, everything's at fingertips reach. It's like also when there's a problem in a relationship, instead of talk, you know how many people talk to other people about their fucking relationship problems? They don't even talk, and the other person doesn't even know they're like in this problem. Yep. It's like. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people <laughs> in a relationship, <clears throat> you know, you, you need to be having that discussion with your partner mm -hmm. and <laughs> having that. Um, you know, figuring out with your partner how you can work through it. And if you're feeling some type of way, like, oh, he did this, like, fuck him, that was so rude of him. Instead of texting, you know, Becky about it, just tell, you know, your partner, hey, you did this, it made me feel some type of way about it. But so many people also on top of that are constantly texting outside forces and communicating to outside forces about the relationship. And they're not dealing with the problem at hand, which is like the person sitting across from you. And then like, they get advice from someone who's like, in a shitty relationship yeah they get advice <laughs> from people that are in a shitty relationship and also then it like like you said earlier it perceives this image of your partner in a very negative aspect yeah. because you no one goes to, you know, your partner and is like, oh my God, like he took me to Big Sur for the weekend. We had a kind of like dinner. It was so romantic, so sweet. Like it's usually like you reach out when there's problems. So then yeah. there's like a negative portraying of who your partner actually is. I mean, I think I, th I really have little faith in society dating. Um, you know, it's great that you're good on your own. I'm good on my own also. So it's like, it's not like we're like seeking a relationship every opportunity, yeah. but of course we would like a relationship and it's nice to have somebody that you're compatible with and can be sweet with, but it's just, it's, it's hard and it's only going to get harder. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> you know? It's hard. It's only going to get harder. Yeah. Honestly, I wish I was in your position where you've been single for four and a half years. Yeah. I think for me, it's so frustrating. Like I only date if I see a future. Yeah. So which makes sense. Now I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm 30. Obviously, I'm not healed. It's only been a couple months. You That's know? normal, though. Don't be hard on yourself. I know, but now I have to fucking heal. I know. but <laughs> You've done it before. You'll do it again. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like. Like, yeah, I'm four and a half years out. So I have, I'm in such a different place. But when he yeah. first broke up with me, I mean, I never want to be that girl again. And did you rebound? 
No. No. No, I didn't hook up with anyone in between the two months till we got back together. But um because I was so broken. Like I'm not mm-hmm. going to find um like I'm not going to find purpose, healing, happiness and some random fuck for the night. Like, yeah. so I just like, and also like, I literally didn't leave my bed. I, it was, I was really bad. Like I was really, really, really bad. I get that. Like when you get out of a relationship, no matter if you're doing the breaking up or you got broken up with, it's going to hurt either way for different reasons. It's going to suck. But you have to take that time to heal. Don't distract yourself and like really focus on yourself and figure out what worked, what didn't work. What did I do right in the relationship? What could I have done better? So I know for my next relationship. And I do think everybody needs to grieve, cry, eat chocolate, cry to your friends, text your friends. But at some point you have to get up because Mm -hmm. if you don't, you will go down a very dark, depressing rabbit hole. And it's easy to head that way because you know, I would, you, you cry to your friends and then your whole fucking TikTok algorithms, like these like sad quotes with like rain yeah. falling. Or it's like, I had Matthew Hussey coming up. Who's like, I don't know if you know who Matthew Hussey mm-hmm. is, but he's like a dating relationship. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I know from who, yeah. Canada. It was like how to get the guy back, how to text the guy, how to yep, do this. Yep. And I was just like, my whole feed was that. So then that's not helping. And then I was like rereading over text messages, trying to figure out where it went wrong. It's like, none of that fucking matters. None of that matters. And it's like, you can go down this deep, rabbit hole and it can get very depressing very dark you cut out a lot of people and i like i said i do think people need to grieve but you have to know when to get up or else there's like you'll get to a point of no return yeah, yeah you're fucked you'll get to a point of no return and like that's why i said the second time that it happened um i literally just kept going i just like I like literally was like, whatever. And just move forward. I didn't cry. I didn't lay in bed. I didn't like research. Like I just literally moved because I had just done it. So, and I also promised myself going back into the relationship. I was like, if he breaks up with me again, I'm not letting myself be that person again. Yeah. Cause it just, I'm just, I, that's not who I am. I'm confident. I'm spunky. I'm outgoing. I'm radiant. Yes. Grieve. But like, don't get to the point where you like feel like it's the end of the world. Death over a human. Mm-hmm. There was how many people in the world? Like yeah, million, I went through those same million? stages, like same shit. TikTok for you page, how to get their ex back, and I used to watch them, but now when I see them, I'm just fucking scroll right past it. I'm like, bro, I don't yeah. want, to, I, I don't want to go down that road again. Yeah, I, I don't think that. I've never gotten back with an ex. Yeah, you can come in. Yeah. Um, and I just think you know if you didn't make it work the first time, then it's it's. I mean, my situation's different. Different. It's like yeah. it ain't gonna happen, but. <laughs> But also be gracious with yourself because like two months is not, is that what you said, right? Two months. That's not a long time. Like yeah, I, know. I was like, st- I was still broken up with like, like cra- being a crazy bitch, like plotting how to get him back two months. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, of course I've, I would hope I'm where I am now, four and a half years later, but two months is still like very fresh. And well, that's like too, I'm like at the point. I'm just like sick of even talking about it. That's yeah. why like I don't even want to like talk about it. I didn't try like, to. I didn't. Uh, no, I know. I, I didn't know. know that my hypothetical was going to hit close to home. No, no, we're, it's just like, yeah, I just I'm like, dude, I don't fucking care to talk about yeah. this anymore. Like it's over. It's in the past. I just yeah. want to move on yeah. with my life and like do some exciting shit. But it sucks because like that's the most recent event in my life, even yeah. though it was two months ago. I mean, but also like uh, when people have me on podcasts or when I have guests on my podcast and we're talking about relationships, like if. If my ex was to listen to any of this, he probably would think I'm still in love with him because it's four and a half years later. And I'm You're always still saying, talking about it, yeah. I'm still talking about it though, because he's my most recent last yeah, yeah. relationship. If there was someone else, then that would be the last relationship that I'm talking about. I mean, but the, it, the lessons don't go away. No, they don't. Yeah, I mean, people, and, and they just happen to be associated with that person. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like every guest I've had on or where, when I go on, they're like, when was your last relationship? I mean, it's always him, but it's like, well, that was my last relationship. So yeah. it wouldn't be him if I've had a relationship since then. But All right, let's talk current events here. What's the worst date you've ever been on? Okay, so I personally... Um, I don't know if I've ever been on a bad date because Mm. I'm not like, first off, I love first dates. I think they're so fun. I used to go on a lot of first dates when I was younger, which I think is wise because I could see what I liked, what I didn't like. But now that I'm older, I don't really date as much, but I'm very confident. I'm very outgoing. I'm very talkative as you can see. So (laughs) very loud. (laughs) Um, so, you know, if a guy's nervous on a first date, it's only a matter of time before he warms up because, I'm just so talkative, but yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people have been on a bad first date, but I feel like that's usually because 
they're not certain going into it and they're kind of unsure of their self. They're unsure of meeting this person. Mm -hmm. I've just never been in a situation. Like, have I met guys where I'm like, "Mm, yeah, like five minutes in, I know like there's not going to be a second date. Yes. But I can sit through the hour and a half dinner with them and have human connection and conversation with the person. Really? Our last guest walked out on a date. Crazy. (laughs) I would never do that. She said she was going to the bathroom and then left. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. (laughs) I I just, I, I don't know. She's getting clapped on the TikTok right now. I mean, honestly, kind of rightfully so. In a good way or a bad way? In In a a bad way. way. Well, the girls are on her side, but the dudes are like, fuck you. Yeah, I. The dude opened up to you and he was emotional. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I don't agree with that. I think that. Like, if you can't sit through an hour and a half dinner with someone, even if you don't vibe with them and it's uncomfortable, then, like, you have you need to work on yourself. Because, like, I can sit through... Shots fired, Juana. <laughs> Period. She wants to fight is what she said, basically. <laughs> yeah, like, you... Like, I think, like, I don't know. I just think that it's... <clears throat> It's very... I mean, this is maybe going to be big shots fired, but I don't... I just think it's very... Dis- yeah, Guys, sorry we're jumping around here. I'm having some technical difficulties over here. The, the, it stopped recording the audio. The cameras have been stopping. I don't know what the hell's going on. Pets heads on. are falling off think, at the moment. Mercury's think, in retrograde. I think That's true, actually. It is. It started today, I think. I think it's the podcast gods telling us that this has been going Shut on for too up. long. Yeah. <laughs> Valid. Um, but Christina, thank you so much for coming on. Iggy, thanks for leaving us for 20 minutes. Um, Had to take a call, man. Sorry. And for those of you guys still around, I appreciate you watching the whole video. Drop a like. Hit that subscribe. And see us next time. What's up, brother?